In the last video, we discussed why heirloom seeds are better for seed saving than hybrid seeds. And in order to save your seeds, it's important to understand how the plants are pollinated. There are three types of pollination. Airborne pollination, where the pollen is carried through the air by the wind or by the breeze. Insect-borne pollination, where insects such as butterflies or bees carry the pollen. Or self-pollination, where the each individual plant is both male and female and it actually pollinates itself. Over the course of this video, we'll discuss more details of each type. Of the three types of pollination, the type that is most risky for cross-pollination is airborne. With this method, the pollen from the plant is carried through the breeze or the wind and deposited to another plant. With all methods of pollination, it's important to keep the method in mind when you are planning out your garden. Increasing the risk of cross-pollination is the fact that corn is pollinated by airborne methods. Due to the height of the corn, the pollen from the plant can very easily pass over the tops of other plants. So especially with corn, it is important to keep a few things in mind when you're planting. When planting a garden of plants that use airborne pollination methods, I would keep it a bare minimum one fourth mile between similar varieties. And one mile would be even better. I definitely would keep corn closer to the mile mark because of the height of the plant. Also take great care to think about the way the wind typically carries throughout your geographical region and keep that in mind. Uh, for example, I would not plant a plant that uses airborne pollination methods on a hilltop or, for example, in a long valley where the wind tends to carry through the valley. This is for obvious reasons because these things will increase the likelihood of having the pollen carried to a place where you don't want it. Of course, many people don't have enough land available to them to be able to plant one mile or even a fourth mile between similar varieties. And in this case, a few things can be done to increase your likelihood of successful seed saving. But at the same time, I would keep in mind that even with these methods, that's not going to be 100% effective. And it may be best for you to only grow one particular variety of that plant. Windbreaks can help reduce your risk of cross-pollination, for example. If you have a barn, perhaps you could plant one variety of corn on one side of the barn and another variety on the opposite side of the barn so that the barn would help break the wind and stop the pollen from transferring from one to the other. Uh, a hedge or even your house, a privacy fence, anything that's going to disrupt the flow of wind is going to increase your chances, but again, none of those things are 100%, but sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. Some examples of plants that are pollinated through the air are beets, corn, spinach, and Swiss chard. This list is not all-inclusive, but these are the most commonly grown plants that are pollinated in this way. Fortunately, there are only four on the list uh, of most common ones, and in later discussion, we will talk about some of the other more commonly grown vegetables and how they are pollinated. To avoid making a video that's too long, I'm going to stop this video here and there will be a part two and maybe a part three to follow very soon after this one is posted. This is so that if you don't have a lot of time to watch the videos, you can break them up into installments or you can watch them one after the other, whichever way you prefer. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch and listen and feel free to comment or subscribe or rate and ask any questions that you may have. Thank you.